Welcome to the New Normal Podcast, and my name is Andrew. I feel like I just keep repeating myself and saying this over and over again, but it's true. A virus did what I couldn't do in 10 years. Changed the way we use the digital world around us. This podcast and these interviews and the, what I talk about here is about how we adjust to new ways of work, learning, communication, even living, and how to design great experiences. First couple of updates, let you know what I've been working on. I've been learning UI design, so user interface designs, while building new communication modules. I've spent the last two weeks working in a UA, UI design tool, mostly making mistakes and having to undo what I've done the previous days. Very frustrating, but a challenging task. I wrote a blog post on my website, link you find below, about this and how my customer and user experience background might be holding me back. I'm always looking for a new challenge. It's one of my lessons of this last year, and as well as for my guest this week, although he's not just been doing this recently, but basically his entire career. I connected with Andrew Prokop once again, and while he didn't become the professor he wanted to, he shares and teaches others constantly. This is a new episode, and I have a backlog of interviews from last year that I will be working through in the coming weeks. Your comments, feedback, support, they're always welcome and well-received. Thank you. Let's get into this new normal episode once again with Andrew Prokop. So on today's episode, I've got Andrew Pukop, uh, and I need to put a little a little context into this relationship. Um, most people who know Andrew Pukop will know him as the dial tone guy who brought SIP into mainstream consciousness. Over the last few years, uh, he went whole hog on adding intelligence to communications with bots and AI, cool stuff. Um, just to put this into other context, other thing about him, you know, Google uh, started, well, YouTube was acquired by Google in 2006. Uh, Andrew Pokop started uploading on YouTube in 2008, has over 250 videos and a half million lifetime views. Um, he's got a blog that he's it's about eight years old. It's got over 100 posts. He's a regular contributor to No Jitter since 2014 with over 100 articles, has six patents, has a book of poetry, which is ranked in the top 10 million on Amazon, published in <laughs> October 2011. He and I actually met uh, for the first time personally in New Orleans in 2018. Uh, at a conference. I interviewed him in January of 2020, uh, where he pitched for another conference, uh, a quick one there. We interviewed in May of last year while you were between jobs. And by the end of the summer, you and I had switched roles. <laughs> you joining the company, I was just leaving. Uh, and I think we were actually colleagues for maybe three weeks or six. I, I wasn't counting. Oh, perhaps so. Perhaps so. <laughs> Thank you for joining me here today. Oh, you're welcome. And, and, and thank you for, my goodness, I have how many videos? Uh, 250. And I, you no. know, and no. I, just, a, just a little correction, a little correction. Um, I actually have several poetry books, but I don't tell people about them. <laughs> so you, yeah, you're... I didn't. I found out about the, well, a poetry book the last time we spoke on an interview here. And, so, and I actually own, own that book. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's, it's fun to just understand um, for a guy who was two credits short of a math degree, um, uh, when he finished college, he's got lots of different things he does. Uh, he plays guitar. Uh, his family's important. Uh, he lives in uh, Minneapolis or near Minneapolis in Minnesota. In uh, I live in St. We like to say oh. St. Paul here oh, yeah. in the capital gonna, city. Gonna, don't, gonna, don't confuse us I'm with gonna that get some city hate over on the, yeah. on the other side of the river. I see it happening. Um, you recently rebranded your SIP Adventures website, your, your blog site, to Tao, Zen, and Tomorrow. But now you're That's writing correct. about SIP again. Interesting enough. Oh my goodness! So yeah. well, I gotta ask I'll, you. I'll explain. I'll exp if we have enough time, I'll explain that one. Yeah, I would ask you what's changed for you in the last year. Oh my goodness, a lot has changed. A lot has changed. Um, and to and it's actually a lot has changed, but a lot has gone back to where it used to be and where it should have been. Um, as some of you know, maybe you know, I've been in this industry since the dawn of time. I mean, since, you know, dinosaur eggs. But I started with a company <laughs> called Northern Telecom a long time ago. And I was, 
I came in as a, an operating systems programmer. I did disk drivers and I did low level stuff. And then I moved off more into the communication space as you know, Northern Telecom brought me more into the mainstream of what they're doing. So I worked in contact centers and, and then I did a lot of SIP work, which you mentioned. So, and that's where, again, all those fun patents came from. And then Northern Telecom just kind of disappeared and you know became nortel and nortel networks and then disappeared and i decided i wanted a change of life and i went off away from programming for many years and i was doing completely different things and then over time i've kind of moved back into that direction and now i am really practically full-time programming Hmm. Um, I do customer meetings, of course, and I do my blogging, and I do videos, and I do training, but the bulk of my day is spent on creating um, software in all sorts of different areas, you know, artificial intelligence, bots, um, I'm doing a lot of collaboration and video work and things like that. I'm having the time of my life, so what has changed is I've actually gone back to my roots, <laughs> and I'm back to where I really feel comfortable. Um, I'm using, I think, the skills that I'm best at, but I'm also given the opportunity to take those other things where, you know, the, the interaction with people and, and my desire to teach. I mean, I write blog articles because I, I have always wanted to be a professor and I never became a professor. So I'm mm -hmm. doing the next best thing as I'm teaching people. So I do the training videos. I do the blog articles because I love to explain things, but I do a lot of programming. I mean, far more programming in the last year than probably the 10 years prior to that. So, so when you, you've, and, and we're not going to go down too many rabbit holes here because you've got a lot out on the web and, the, and that listing of the, the numbers and all was just fun to put together because there's a lot of content about you. So if people are interested in seeing videos you've made or presentations you've recently given on some of these subjects, uh, you can follow the links in the description of the podcast here. Uh, we don't need to do that. But with AI and bots, I've been on the subject for, I guess, since 2018, 2017, I think it was 2016, Facebook Messenger introduced chatbots uh, into their Messenger application, and that subject just sort of blew up, right, as everybody had to talk about chatbots. But what do you think practically some of these things going to do in a, in a customer or employee or patient or whatever sort of scenario? What is it practically going to do for us in, in the near future, in our, in our lifetime? I mean, for those our age, um, just say the next 10 years, what, how much practical advantages uh, or advances are we going to experience? Okay, well, uh, great question, but I, let me rewind just a bit. You said Facebook. My first experience with bot development was using something called wit.ai, which is Facebook's <laughs> um, bot platform. So my very first time writing a virtual agent, writing a bot, was with that platform. So um, they weren't the first, but it's how I started. Mm -hmm. So um, how are things changing? Um, and it's, it's interesting that you bring this up because I just did a webinar yesterday um, on virtual agents, bots, virtual assistants, and artificial intelligence. And every time that I do a webinar, even write a blog article, I learn something because I go and I do my homework and I read and and um, because I don't know everything, I'm like, clearly <laughs> far from it. So doing a webinar, writing an article is educational to me too. One of the things that really jumped out at me as I started to do the research was how important the soft benefits are hmm. of virtual agents and bots. And I know that a lot of people will say, well, we need to save money. You know, we've got top line revenue issues and you know, we, we roll these bots in. And, and we're going to reduce our headcount because our headcount is the most expensive thing. And what it turns out is those are often the least important things and the least important benefits. And often they're not, it's not really, the, what, you're not replacing people, you're augmenting people. And so again, how I see virtual agents um, making a huge difference is not just, oh, I'm going to replace a person and now I'm going to talk to a bot. I'm going to create a really stellar customer experience that may involve and may involve a human may not involve a human but when it does involve a human that human will be better equipped 
to deliver a customer experience because not only will the virtual agent have helped prior to the human getting involved, but the virtual agent will help the human agent do his or her job better. Kind of a digital assistant that sits by your side that is um, not only giving you advice, but doing work for you, kind of your gopher. You know, um, oh, somebody talks about X, Y, Z. The gophers say, oh, let me go get you information about X, Y, and Z, and then bring it back and just put it on your screen. So, oh, here's what the person wanted. And it's listening for the next thing. Or even things like sentiment analysis. It's like, oh, slow down. You know, I think you're getting a little agitated um, kind of thing. The thing that I need in my life is to keep me from getting <laughs> agitated. But I really think that um, this is where we're going to see the biggest differences. And this is how um, people are going to really see the value in this. And that, again, it's making my experience better. It's not s simply a cheap replacement for a human being. It's not an old school IVR that annoys me and I simply want to press zero, 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 zero until I find somebody to speak to. It's going to make a better experience with an agent, without an agent, before an agent, after an agent, during an agent. Uh, so those are, those are the things that are really going to change. Again, and I, I did say, you know, uh, we think of an IVR. An IVR is kind of like during some time period, and then it's gone. But a virtual agent can be um, exist after a transaction is over, and the virtual agent can still be working on it. So you may hang up the phone or stop the chat or whatever, and the virtual agent can still be working in the background assisting you, the customer, assisting the agent, assisting the enterprise. Kind of a long-winded way of saying, I think that customer experience is paramount and virtual agents are going to make a big difference. And it's a difference that we're all going to enjoy again, whether you're on the receiving end or on the giving end, you know, customer, agent, enterprise. And you think this will be, we'll, we'll start seeing these advances and these, these I don't know, features being added to our experiences in, in the near future? Well, we're already seeing them okay. in advance. You know, they're already there. And, and I've certainly been working with a number of enterprises that are rolling this technology out. Um, and I'm running into uh, virtual assistants in more and more places as I either shop online or have questions. And some of them are, are really well done. And I'm, you know, pleased as punch. Others are not so well done, but I'm seeing more and more of them well done. And I'm also seeing more and more, again, enterprises adopt the virtual uh, assistant for the agent. Um, and I think that's really exciting stuff for me. Um, um, I've never been a contact center agent, but I've actually done contact center. Um, you know, I've sat down with agents and looked at what they do. And, and I look at how sometimes these repetitive tasks can be very, very annoying. And I'm seeing now how the virtual agents are really making a big difference, you know, doing automatic transcription, moving things into CRMs, delivering surveys, um, and again, helping the agent as the agent is moving along, especially if you're a young, inexperienced agent, and you're, you're getting that advice um, as you're moving through a transaction. So it's happening now, and it's only going to get more and more and more as, as time goes on, as people realize just how important this technology is. So it's not going to be like Clippy. Um, well, <laughs> I can't tell you. I know what Clippy is, but um, Clippy wasn't it, Clippy. It, wasn't Clippy the the Microsoft oh, Office? Oh, oh yes, animated. The, the, oh, paper the paperclip. Clip. The yeah. paper. Did he? Did that have a name? I, I don't. That know. little annoying it's, thing. For, in my brain, um, I, I keep thinking of Clippy. I'm not sure. No, and that's probably what it was. Uh, and I see him now, or her, it. Um, <laughs> It, it is not going to be that way. It is, it is, you know, we in, you know, in de software development, we always, I like to say at least um, that the pioneers are always the first to die. And Clippy served a purpose. Clippy, you know, opened up the Oregon Trail. Clippy's dead and gone. And then we're now moving across the, uh, the Oregon Trail that Clippy helped build. You there know, every, go. everything that failed has a, has a role in the next success, you know, you know, Apple, Lisa, total failure. Yep. It certainly made a big difference in, in Apple as it moved forward with Macintosh. I mean, failures are just another way of saying it's a precursor to success. So you 
you said you've been programming a lot recently, and I know you've you've moved on from just the AI and bot world into the collaboration space. Uh, so yes. you might want to explain what that means to some people that don't really know what that means. You've been building or working on some very unique um, new ways of of, of doing things, um, and but it goes back to, to, to your roots, right? Of just taking things apart, understanding how it works, and then figuring out other ways of maybe putting things together. What, what, if, what, what some of the, maybe, maybe give you an example of one of the interesting, exciting things you've been working on. Well, I, um, I was introduced to uh, Teams technology, you know, early on. I mean, I was part of, um, if, if you go back some years, Microsoft LCS, you know, live communication server, and then OCS, and then uh, Link, and then, you know, Skype for business. And then, of course, you know, what was happening in, in the, the WebEx teams, you know, move, you know, from Spark to WebEx teams. And then uh, clearly, you know, I work for my uh, for um, Avaya and what's happening in the Avaya spaces. So I've been looking at these uh, collaborative workspace products for quite some time. And um, my emphasis in all programming is I, I, I approach everything from an API standpoint. So I approach everything from the standpoint of um, all of these products really are just a collection of functions and interfaces that happen to look a certain way that, you know, Microsoft or Cisco or Avaya happen to deliver it in a certain way. But the underlying technology, to me, is what excites me. It's not how it's delivered on their particular screen, but the ability to take it as a, a Lego collection or a Lincoln Logs and build it in any which way that I want. And so what I've been doing lately you know, in the Avaya world is I've taken our uh, flagship collaboration product, Spaces, and I've really kind of torn it down to its building blocks and then taking those building blocks and then repurposing them into applications that are more the workflow of the particular industry customer. So I can say, you know, you are, um, and I won't give any uh, company names, but you're a hospital and you want to deliver uh, a telemedicine of some sort. What you don't want to do is you don't want to say, oh, here, I'm going to send you a Zoom link. Now you go to Zoom and then you do your thing. And then when you're done, you come back to my web page, which might be something like, you know, Epic's, you know, my chart kind of thing. Is I'm saying, well, uh, you know, Epic, my chart, why don't you take that functionality and just build it right into your work stream? So you're not sending somebody to a different place. You're leaving them where you want them to be. You're delivering that collaboration experience and you are collecting the data. You are managing where they go from here, you know, from here to here to here. So I've been doing that again in the in the, a lot of different industries. Um, taking one of um, the projects that's actually live now is taking that concept and moving that into a learning management system. And so distant lear distance learning. Uh, there was a situation where um, we. Uh, University was had their learning management system and they had their grading and they had their assignments and all that, but they were sending them off to some other platform for the video. Now incorporated that video by again, taking this toolkit approach and taking these APIs and moving it into a single platform. So now we have a single escalation from assignment to virtual classroom, to study group, to grading system. Um, and we aren't leaving again, the workflow that this company wants to deliver they were staying in the same workflow. It's a long-winded way of saying, taking APIs, um, using the APIs to build uh, new products um, from the existing products. Um, and so again, that's where I've been spending a lot of my time. And, and I have to tell you, I never thought, I never thought that video would ever be all that important in my life. Yeah. And it took this little pandemic to show me how wrong I was and now video is, uh, I don't really like it when, um, you know, excuse me, I work for, you know, you call me dial tone guy. I don't like it when people call me. I don't even like it when they text me or they send me an IM. 
I really like video calls now. And I, I just never thought I would like that. So if I want to set up with a meeting with somebody, I always send them a link to my video room and we meet that way. But again, I want enterprises, I want companies to say, what's the experience I want to deliver for my clients in the way that they want it and the way I want it. And so again, this toolkit approach. So that is what I've been doing for the last um, uh, several months. And hmm. again, surprisingly loving it and, and thinking this thing that, you know, I never want to be on camera. Who wants to be on camera? And now it's like, yeah, that's, this is what I do. And this is what I love. <laughs> I remember when I reached out to you in, in January last year to do a video pitch for your sessions uh, at the event there, you, were, you, you made a statement, something like, um, I have a radio face or something like that, or this face was made well, for radio, right? So I've, I've, I, I would still make that statement, but I, I'm not, a fr <laughs> I, I, I've come to grips with it. I found serenity with go. my radio face in video. Again, it has become a very, not just a comfortable experience, but it's, it's my expectation. Again, I never would have expected that, but it is my expectation. Um, I'm, I have a meeting tomorrow with somebody to, to talk about artificial intelligence and security. And he said, what's your phone number? And I said, oh, well, here's my, <laughs> here's my video space. It's a URL. It's uh, not a phone number. <laughs> yeah. Here's, here's my URL for a video space. Yeah. And thankfully he, he said, great. Um, because that's where I'm most comfortable. So. So listening to, to you talk about that and you talk about, you know, APIs and that's the that's the level that you're working at most of the time. What I'm hearing is you're you're breaking down the silos, right? There are different technologies. There can be a video platform over here, there's gonna be a chat platform over there, there's gonna be a a whatever, another piece over here, there's data over there, and and having to go here for that and send something over there for that. Uh, is is inefficient uh, from a from a business perspective, but it's just not a good experience. That's uh, one of the things, and and it can be fraught with 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 uh, failure. You know, wrong stuff gets put somewhere, uh, and things like that. So you're you're trying to do what what I was doing in the contact center space of all these. We were t we would talk about channels. So there's an email channel, voice and chat or whatever it is out there, uh, and they were always separate. Most often they were separate uh, uh, properties that you couldn't exchange data between there. And that's what I spent the last 15 years of my career uh, whilst doing doing that there to talk about break down the silos. And now you're gone beyond that to say, we need to do this all over the place, whether it's a, a doctor trying to do telehealth or a school or university trying to do education. Uh, why send them Maybe it is a Zoom link, but why, or a spaces from Avaya link that doing there, but put it in the same application that the student's already in instead of saying, go over there. Uh, because you could also find out if that student actually went into it or if they had trouble trying to go into the link because you're still in that application that's controlling the session, the, the education uh, environment there. And you can say, oh, they've clicked it three times, something's wrong, maybe I need to send an IM to that student. And it's, if they leave and do something else, then you don't have that kind of intelligence. And I think that's, that's what I know you've been working on for a long time in different areas of the business here and different types of platforms and technologies there. Uh, it's what you were doing for SIP from the beginning uh, is taking uh, communications, adding, taking the data layer you can put on top of it there and then bringing it all together. And I think there's just things I can't even imagine. I'm not sure if you're working on any, any new patents out there right now, uh, but <laughs> things that are possible that we haven't even really considered so far. I think there's just a, a, a plethora of, of new things we're going to see coming around the corner. Oh, absolutely. And, and one thing I want to point out too is um, again, you send them over a different platform and you're, you were talking about you, know, you can help them if you're in the same platform, but all that data that was gathered in that different platform is in a different platform. And well, what about all the chats that they sent? Those are probably important. What about the information that you shared back? That's probably pretty important. Maybe the transcriptions or maybe even the sentiment. Maybe we are in real time analyzing the students to see, are they getting glassy eyed? Are mm -hmm. they really paying attention and gathering that, that information to help the professor do a better job the next time around? You don't go to a store that's just the canned tomatoes store, or it's just the brown rice store. You go to a store that has, you know, you know go to a grocery store, they, they hopefully have everything that you want. And so that's the API economy to me is 
you have this great big store that we call the cloud and it has everything you want and you go through the the aisles and you have a shopping cart well i want this and i want this and i want this and i want this and i you're putting together your experience from this collection of experiences and not there are no two shoppers that leave the store with the same stuff in the cart and, and again that's what excites me that's what excites me interesting so i have one one last question for you and it's something you posted just recently uh a, a post on linkedin i read there and you said that you suffer from post success letdown <laughs> what do what do you mean by that you know and how does how does that affect you <laughs> so many people have come back to me on that one um and it's true and and i've always i don't know about always but this has been with me for a long time if I'm working on something that's really difficult, at least difficult for me, and and I put my heart and soul into it, and I'm thinking about it at night sometimes, and I wake in the middle of the night and I come up with an idea, well, maybe I can try this. Well, I f eventually, thankfully in my life, I've solved all the big technology problems that have ever, th ever been thrown at me. There's nothing sitting there, you know, 10 years ago, I still need to fix this. But when they're done, I get this sense of, oh, oh, well, now what? <laughs> and it's, it's almost as if I have to say goodbye to a, to a friend. And that friend was the problem. And it's gone. And I don't, you know, don't try and psychoanalyze this, but <laughs> I get this, I get this big let down you know people talk about the christmas letdown you know oh, the holidays are over well for me it's a little quicker than the holidays are over it's in the middle of the holiday i just solved this oh okay oh boy i kind of wish i were still working on it now i've got to think of something else something else always comes to me but there's that moment of post letdown <laughs> you know you know and, and other people have come back to me you know other people they've come back and well don't worry there's another problem yeah, i get that but it's that feeling of just sort of it's like, you know, if you're, you're as old as me, Peggy Lee had a song called, is that all there is? <laughs> and it's like, is that, go, go look that one up. Is that all there is? It's one of the most depressing songs you'll ever hear in your life. <laughs> but at the end of something, it's like, oh, is that all there is? Is that all there is to a fire? Is that it? So that's me. I suffer. Oh, the guy who and, uh, and it was in silence. Now it's in public. <laughs> <laughs> now it's now it's on 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 magnetic. No, it's not magnetic tape, but it's now been recorded. It'll be out there. Andrew, I appreciate you for uh, again uh, being part of of my 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 trying to discover what is the new normal, what's changing here. And uh, I didn't know this last year was going to be this last year, uh, and what it all happened to you and to me and to the rest yep. of the world. Uh, it's been quite exciting, and I really appreciate you taking your time out of the day. You are in a Hawaiian shirt. You are in Minnesota. I can't imagine it's 70-plus degrees outside today, but that's just the no, kind of guy was, you are. It was 32 when I went walking this morning. Yeah. Um, but, I, but I don't want to burst your bubble, but the new normal, there is no normal. The normal has gone. It's, it doesn't exist anymore. I, I have a feeling that there is never going to be another normal ever, that it's always about change and it's about adaptation. And in the end, it's about serenity. You know, you have to accept these things that are happening and maybe you can change them a bit. Maybe you can't um, recognize the difference and be serene. Well, on that note, that's, that's my new normal. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, I think we'll just, we'll close. But thanks for having me. I I always love talking to you, Andrew. I mean, well, my goodness, another Andrew. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? So. Oh, we'll, we'll, find, we'll find a way for it to go wrong one of these times here. I do appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Um, this, all the information, the links to Andrew's uh, poetry books and, and blog posts and video sites <laughs> and LinkedIn. He's on Twitter or whatever. Uh, they'll all be in the notes here on the description under the podcast. And uh, appreciate your time. And I look forward. I think we need to come around again. Uh, and see what happens in the next year of what is normal or not normal and see see what problems you find over the next year that need to be fixed. Knock on wood, I'll be here. So I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. 
Thanks now. Bye-bye.